You're watching the Business Channel, creating business class programs. Flacked Woods is a leading global supplier of air technology solutions for buildings, infrastructure and industry. And here to tell me a little bit more is the MD, Alan Hurdle. Welcome to you. Hello, Sarah. Nice to meet you. Tell me a little bit about the company, about what you do. OK, well, Flacked Woods itself has been in operation now for over 100 years. Um, and we are quite honoured to be the leader in uh, actual fan manufacturing, which we developed back in 1947. But it was in 2002 that we joined with FLAC to become the Flatwoods organisation. We're an international company supplying product all over the world and we turn over in the region of 500 million euro in Europe. Uh, therefore we see ourselves as a, as a leader in ventilation products and specifically building services products as well. Now you don't do residential, so what's your particular niche? Our main niche market is building services, large uh, commercial buildings and OEM customers supplying product all over the world. Now what impact do you think can your products have on lowering carbon emissions and being more energy efficient? Um, relating to our own products we're more akin to mechanical products which from the different legislations that are occurring today the ERP developments that are occurring has meant that we've had to look quite closely at electric components such as electrical motors for instance, back in June of last year, what ended up happening was that the standard electric motor moved away to becoming a specialised motor called the IE2 electric motor, which has a massive impact in carbon reduction and efficiency. In fact, this has actually reduced the energy consumption by over 30%. Coupled to this, our main driver, which is our axial fan, we've had to develop the efficiency factors from, say, 75% to over 90% to meet the carbon reduction emission programs. The other point that is occurring with industry is that there's this link towards uh, carbon reduction. So energy recovery units for buildings, particularly in schools, have been very, very important. Energy recovery units now can give you as upwards of 90% energy recovery. So we're quite fortunate we have developed lots of these different products to actually meet the demands the way legislation is taking industry and business particularly. How do you see buildings changing over the next five to ten years? I'm thinking there's more flexible working, people work from home and buildings um, managers are really trying to you know, not light or heat rooms that are not in use. Do you see this kind of thing? What's happening is there's this massive development now towards controls and sensors. The very point you mentioned that you go into a building, the lights will be turned on or turned off, the heating comes on and comes off, and therefore the sensors and the controls are very important. We've actually seen a lot of this in terms of the car park business. What's happened in the old days, a lot of ducted system in car parks were actually installed. Today, they're now working towards a jet fan system, which is controlled through the management building control system, CO2 detectors, uh, smoke detectors. These are far more efficient and they're in a situation that it actually allows the fire brigade to get to the seat of the fire quicker, which in turn will reduce the CO2 emissions that are occurring from the fire. So there are major changes that are occurring and, and our role is to help educate people towards the new products that are available in today's market. How do you think that you can help SIBSI members achieve all of the things that they need to in their work? I'm thinking complying with the carbon reduction commitment, the Green Deal. How can you help them with that? Well, what, what we've found, actual fact, at Flatwoods, our own company, we do a lot of fan academies. And the fan academy is aimed at, such as consultants and contractors, to actually see the various products that are available in the market and to give them choices of the products that will give them the best energy efficiency for for what they're doing within the type of building that they're building. So for us, it is important that they do that because we want them to choose the right product for the right application. So we do a lot of training, a lot of education. A good instance of this, for instance, is in fittings. Now, most buildings have a lot of ductwork and the UK particularly has gone for what they term as a non-sill fitting. When they fit the duct in, they end up having to put mastic or tape around these, and there's a lot of air leakage. Over in Europe now, they're moving to what was termed as sealed fittings, and the sealed fittings can reduce the air leakage from a building by over 30%. 
Now, we need, as a company, to help train the consultants and the contractors and the architects in what the benefits are of going to seal fittings for the through life of a building. Do you think that in creating a low carbon workplace that a retrofit or a, a refurb is the most realistic option? Do you, do you find people try and work with the building they've got or they knock it down and build another Well, one? no, we're, we're finding actually there's, there's different programmes that are effective. For instance, the government's schools projects, there was a lot of refurbishment going on for the schools projects. And we've actually pulled a lot of contracts on that will bring these energy recovery units into the schools projects which can give up towards of 90% energy recovery. So they're quite good and there are certain private buildings also that are taking up the refer program. So it's really about what they want to achieve. In the old days, contractors and consultants would have supplied the product into the building and then it become the actual service manager's responsibility to service that. What's happening now, our clients, their clients are seeing the benefits of actually either refurbishing their buildings or effectively ensuring that new buildings to the new Bream legislation, for instance, meets these demands. So you can't say that any sort of um, building is, is right for one sort of application. Do you think that the government should be doing more to uh, create a low carbon economy? Well, certainly my view is, is that I'm supporting SIBSI quite a bit now in terms of being vocal in ensuring partnership programs occur. Now, the government, as I mentioned before, have done a lot within the schools projects, but the big event for me is partnership programs between all the actual uh, companies and the businesses that are related to buildings and carbon reduction. The manufacturers, for instance, have a wealth of experience that can be actually shared with the designers, with the architects and the governments towards what is best for that building. And for myself, that's what the government have got to be doing, is ensuring that they recognise that use all the resources and all the available skills that are out there in the industry. And if we do that, then we'll be taking on the best in Europe for the future. Alan Hurdle, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sarah.